In this screencast, I'm going to talk to you about pressure volume diagrams as a way into thinking about cubic equations of state. And the diagram that I want to get to is shown here, and we're going to build this up step by step. So to start with, we're going to look at different regions of a pressure volume diagram. We'll then go on to look at some isothermal behavior and have a bit of a demonstration of how that works. We'll then round things off with um, some equations of state and talking about how they come into this. So to start with, um, the pressure volume diagram has different regions. So for example, we have uh, a liquid vapor region here, where there's the coexistence of liquid and vapor, and that is uh, encapsulated between the dew point line and the bubble point line here. Uh, then nestled in between the dew point line and the critical temperature isotherm, we have the vapor region. So this is where our substance is uh, in the gas phase, but it's below the critical temperature. We then have the gas region, so where we are above the critical temperature, we, we have this gas phase, um, uh, and as long as we're below this critical pressure here. So this dashed line here represents the critical pressure. Once we go above this line, we're in the supercritical region. Uh, this is the critical point, and we also have a liquid region over to the left here as well. Now, in terms of isotherms, if we have an isotherm at a temperature that's above the critical temperature, so T1 in this case, then we have this curve here, and that's just nice and straightforward. But if we're below the critical temperature, so T2 in this, in this case, then it follows along like this. So we start to have um, changes in pressure as we reduce the molar volume, and then we come across um, at a, a level line here, from the dew point to the bubble point, and then it rises sharply here. That's because liquids are incompressible. And so as we start to compress the liquid, the pressure shoots up very quickly. So just to demonstrate this behavior with uh, a bit of an example, we've got a cylinder here uh, with one mole of our substance, and this is currently at 500 centimeters cubed. So the star represents where we are in terms of the position on the diagram and we can start to compress this. So if we move this down and get to 400 centimeters cubed, then we move along the isotherm. Now this is assuming that we're removing any heat that's generated from the compression of the vapor that we've got in, in this cylinder. And if we compress this further, again keeping this isothermal by removing any excess heat, we start to move along the isotherm even further along. So the pressure's going up once we get to the dew point, um, here at 218 centimeters cubed, we get the first drop of liquid forming. If we reduce the, vo the volume even further, then we start to generate more liquid, and this is now coexisting with vapor. And then if we get down to 51.5 centimeters cubed, we're now at the bubble point, so we have the last bubble of vapor present. And this just really is to illustrate how this how this diagram relates to reality and, and what's going on. If we compress this to fur even further, then we'd start to go move up this line. So in terms of cubic equations of state, we can use uh, a, a, a cubic equation of state to start to model this behavior and explain this behavior. And what we typically get is a line that comes down like this. It then goes down to a minima goes up to a maxima and then comes back down again. And there are different equations of state that we can use for this. So there's Van der Waals, there's Redlick Kwong, there's Peng Robinson, and there's further videos that explain each of these and start to show how these can be used. Now, if we plot in the saturated vapor pressure for T2, so this is the temperature um, that we've been looking at for this isotherm, and now we've got the pressure at which the vapor is saturated. We, if we think about this line going through our cubic equation here, we have three roots. Now the middle root has no physical significance, but the roots at either side actually do have some physical significance. So the one over to the right represents the dew point, and the one over to the left represents the bubble point. So if we simply just draw in a tie line between these two points, we've now got the isotherm 
that explains this behavior here. And so that's very useful for starting to explain um, the behavior, the, the vapor liquid coexistence of our substance. And um, that is a, a basic introduction to pressure volume diagrams uh, leading into equations of state.